So I'd like to review a little bit about when you first plug in your limelight into your computer. It will be set up as a DHCP. You may have to download an app, uh, Bonjour Download. It's uh, essentially Apple, I, not iTunes. It's an, it's, I think it's iTunes. It installs Apple iTunes on your computer. But that also allows your Windows PC, especially with Windows 7. I think Windows 10 has is better about it. But if you have a Windows 7 PC, this is a guarantee you must install. And that will allow your PC to get that, that the DHCP connection to the camera. So what you what you'll do is browse to limelight.local colon or is that semicolon? What's a colon? Limelight dot local colon fifty eight oh one. That's when you'll that's where you'll get onto the limelight dashboard. One of the first suggested uh, changes is to browse over here to the settings tab. Change your team number to whatever that may be for network tables connections and also come down here to set your IP to static. Change your IP to the first convention of 10 dot first digit of the team number, second digit of the team number dot 11 is a very common for your first IP cameras. Next tab is the subnet mask. We depend on your network it's suggested to be on 255, 255, 255, 0, as well as go enter your default gateway. This is a must. On the next step, if you don't cha enter your gateway, the IP will not stick, which is typically dot one. Click change IP. I don't believe, our team number is already set on this, so the team number was changed. And it gave us the warning that we must power cycle our camera to take effect. Status indicators on the top here. Now that we set uh, static IP, the amber light is solid, letting us know that the static IP did take. DHCP that will have a slow flash, flash. As well as we now, as we talked earlier before, the green LED, when it's looking for targets, it'll have a slow blink. And even when I put my hand in front of here, it, it starts to get faked out and it thinks it sees, sees a target. And that's when, so some status. To change the step back to def if for some reason we get a new camera and uh, we don't know what the IP is in there and we can't connect, connect it to it, one of the best things to do is to power off your camera. As it powers up, hold down the reset button. This will return it back to DHCP. When you first plug in your camera, the camera like I was talking about before will be set up as a DHCP, getting the IP address from the network switch or self assign from Bonjour. The slow blink on uh, as for the amber light is DHCP mode, the green LED is vision tracking. After we go in and configure our Lion Light to static IP address, by browsing to our Volume light dashboard, clicking on the settings tab. All right, camera is, been, is set to DHP. We browse over to our settings tab where we can change our team number. Click the change button. A power cycle will be required. Come down to static, enter in your, at first, using the first uh, numbering convention of 10 dot team, three, two in our case, dot four four dot and then picking a camera which in first is usually the first IP cameras eleven is normally suggested come down and set your network mask in this situation a 255.255.255.0 is sufficient and also enter the gateway ten dot again three two dot four four dot one is the default gateway if you do not change the default gateway, the next power cycle that's required here after change IP, it says, it, it won't stick. The default gateway is necessary. So we'll come over here, power cycle our limelight. When it boots up here, the amber light will then be solid.
the whole thing we're like saying that we have now a static IP address sign. We don't have a robot here yet today. So we have this simulated target that we quickly put together. First thing we'll look at is uh, our first tab here for input. Here's if we our camera's mounted upside down, we can change the orientation from normal to upside down. We can also, if we want to shut the LEDs off, shut those off so they're not quite as bright and irritating. If we're gonna just primarily use our robot for uh, drive mode, turning the exposure up will allow us to be use our camera as a more of a drive camera. In first though, a low exposure rate to filter out as much light as possible is desired. Turn the LEDs back on. As default here to start off with, orientation normal or flipped are the only options you will need to change. Next step would be go to thresholding. As the default, these will all be relatively high. We can come over here and start adjusting our sliders if you're familiar with grip, just like grip would have, adjusting the H, S, and V values. They've given us this great tool here with an eyedropper. Come over here and select the green bright colors returning back to us. We're picking up a lot of the pixels, but you can see we're missing a few. So we can start adding pixels to increase our found objects. And that's actually the first one step. That usually takes two or three. If we're finding that there's a pixel that's being found, we can hit ignore and it'll subtract those pixels out as well. But we'll include those back in. I probably really messed her up now, huh? Eyedropper. Start over. Include pixel. There, we're back to normal. You can see though, in all of our vision targets this year, there's two. Limelight does give us uh, an option for how many targets it's looking for. Should So in this case, we're looking for dual targets. There we so let's say, oh, I'll define two targets. If I go and cover up one target, you'll see that the bounding box disappears saying, you see my hand too, that's why my hand is reflecting. It's not good enough. It must find two for it to be a valid target. You got it. Pardon? You got it. Yeah, I seen it flashing back and forth. Out of the bat, we are finding our two targets. The next step is to use this data. Right now, we're set up where this robot is dead center on the target, and that's, that would be the ideal position. But let's just say that our camera is offset to the one side where this is actually the scoring image to score the object. We come over here to calibrate our crosshairs. Right now it says we're two degrees off from target. Calibrate it. We're now a fl a fl flickering, but essentially zero degrees from target. We have no robot connected to this camera right now. We're primarily using the PC. Right now I have the PC set up as, and this is a great, uh, great pro tip for teams that just got their limelight and don't have a robot yet to test it on. The PC that you're uh, setting the, setting this up on and maybe doing some tests on, see if you can't get vision targets on, if you go into the configuration of the PC and set the laptop up as 10.team with you using your team number, dot two, which is typically your Robo Reels uh, IP address, you can go in and use a tool called Outline Viewer. This tool this year will be located in your C, Users, Public, the new FRC 2019 folder created with the one, touch, one click installer and tools. You'll launch this out Outline Viewer using the Outline Viewer VBS. What you'll want to do is set this up as server mode, so it acts as if it's the RoboReal. With network tables, there's one server, which is the RoboReal, and all other devices are clients that connect to it and will publish data to the table that others can use. So now, if you did have a robot, you would be, uh, you'd tell it where, where it is and you'd be able to look at the RoboReal's 
network table as the server. Here we can see that the rover or the limelight is publishing a camera camera publisher where you can drag this object if you're using smart dashboard or shuffleboard or some of the other tools or dashboards that first and WPI has put out for us as well as this limelight tag. This limelight tag has a number of variables underneath it sending back the target skew which may be handy in this year's target where we know our targets are 14 and a half degrees slant so we can check things there. TV is target found I believe if I take this away TV will go zero. So TV is just a, one of those target found. Uh, TX is degrees from the calibrated crosshair horizontally. TY is degrees vertically. As well as snapshot, we can go from a program say in the middle of a game, say we're just not getting quite what we want. Our code, and there's a limelight library we wrote to make this a lot easier. Instead of writing all your own getters and setters, you can just use our library. But you can write uh, table, limelight, snapshot, set, and set this to a 1. What that will do is take a picture of what I'm currently seeing. And then you, when you get back to the pits, you can now log into your camera, go into input. And instead of using input source camera, go to snapshots, and that picture will be the last picture you take. And then you can see what is the camera actually seeing and why isn't it acquiring targets. Maybe we need to adjust some sliders. You could, that could be a button on your joystick saying if, for the drivers to take a snapshot. Or it could be, say, we're going to start uh, vision tracking. Maybe the first thing we do is we want to take a snapshot of what we're going to start acquiring every time. So every time we say track target, auto score it, we can come back to the pits and say, what did it really see? Very handy network table entry. As well as the stream. We have multiple options. Do we want the USB stream, the, the camera stream, the target acquisition stream, what stream and how you want to stitch those. It's a picture in picture, so the USB on top, USB as the secondary camera view. And I'm hoping for some more options in the stream. Cam mode is, a, a lar uh, is an important variable this year in our in our let's what are we saying augmented uh, autonomous necessarily where we we have a limited view or no view of the screen we may want to use our camera as a as a f was it fpv pov or first first person view fpv fpv driving is that what they do in the drones fpv first person view first person flyer uh, i don't know we may want the camera to not be our we may not want our exposure turned all the way down where we, where we can't see what the for a driver camera. We can go in here, set this to one. And what that does, let me go back over here to camera view. It turns up our exposure so we can use it as a driving camera. And as soon as we hit click our button again to start auto acquiring a target or is Set that to zero. The exposure goes down again, and now it starts acquiring targets again. Pipeline: If we have multiple targets, uh, uh, different types of targets on the field, we can uh, tune different pipelines and say, for the airship, we want to run pipeline zero. For the cargo bay, we want to run pipeline one. Some advanced variables as well, where we're getting some raw data back. Typically, all we're going to really need to do is the TX and TY. When you go over to the Limelight website at limelightvision.oi, you'll be able to browse over to their documentation, which is a great. Well, I'm not online anymore, so I just killed it. Browse over to Limelight's website at limelightvision.oi. You can go down here to the documentation, they have a great write up on all the APIs and how to acquire this information from the network tables with sample code for Java, LabVIEW coming, C++ is there as well as Python. 
So you're more than you're welcome to write your own cust write write your own code to go and get these variables. You can see the different options for the LED modes for if you want the pipeline to control it or you can force it on, blink the lights, whether you want uh, camera mode to be vision processor, driver camera, pipeline numbers, how the stream you want, your snapshot, as long as all the other variables that are published to the network table. This is great, but none of us are ever going to memorize all these different variables and what they mean and what value to set them for. So what we did in the off season and while we were beta testing the camera is created a library for the limelight. If you browse over to GitHub and go to Granite City Gearheads 3244, you'll find in our stack of code. If you browse over to GitHub and search for Granite City Gearheads 3244, you'll find our Limelight library example. In here, there's a currently a, it's set up as beta, but we'll be updating the library shortly for the, the re release versions of WPI is a, a sample program that shows you how to get for all the getters and setters. Down here is the instructions to copy the OI Limelight Vision Limelight FRC package into your source main Java folder. What that will allow you to do is create a Limelight object here as well as then with all the some samples of some getters and setters. If you do browse up here to the source Java robot commands there's a single command in here that gets all the data and shows all the the getters that are in the library so you don't have to write all that code you can browse over to our subsystems we have a my limelight subsystem inside here is where we're creating an instance of the limelight limelight equals new limelight this does accept or variables or arguments. If you leave it empty, it will set up the default Limelight network table tag. But if you do change your Limelight name, you'll have a Limelight underscore your unique name. You'll have to pass that argument into this, this uh, object creator or method, and that will then create the network table if necessary. And down here, we just have a, a public method that returns the Limelight so when we go over to our command, you'll see get data is connected equals robot my limelight get limelight and uh, the variable is connected or is target found or get degrees to a target, which would be your TX value. As well as there's some samples in there as how to set the LED mode. And remember I said something about uh, what does uh, LED mode 1, 2, 3 mean? Well, we created some emunations that we can actually set LED mode to LED mode force off, force on. That will go retrieve the value of it and set it appropriately. I believe that's... If you have any other questions or would like to share or uh, help with the libraries. I encourage you to fork the library and uh, send some push requests up there and help uh, develop maybe the C++ side if that's your team's strong points as well as Python which is becoming stronger every year in FIRST Robotics.